Hi there all, thought I'd show off my plunder for the day. Obviously it's late September so autumn is starting to come and um, some trees do um, drop their seeds or nuts or fruit before others whilst others are still in full green and not quite developed yet. Um, but today I went across the road because the conker trees just across the way I can show you just over there, gorgeous huge trees, well over 100 years old. Um, they've been dropping them like a madden and actually pretty decent sized. I then went on a walk towards the woods and uh, before I got to the woods actually, the oak trees lining the country path, um, they, they just dropped loads and loads of acorns. So these come from about five or six different oak trees. I try and only pick a small handful from each tree, leave plenty for wildlife and for other kind of foragers. Um, so that I'm not taking, you know, the whole um, season's crop. Uh, but these come from about five or six different trees. So there's a, a wealth of genetic material within the uh, seeds there. They all have, you know, different heritage and um, rather than all coming from the same plant, with which could lead them to uh, future susceptibility to disease or the uh, negative effects of climate change. I'm going to show you guys now how I'm going to sow the conkers in the oaks and they'll be left in a pot over winter to uh, deal with the cold and then to germinate in the spring. The larch trees, um, they're going to be uh, taken out the cones and stored in the fridge in some uh, in a dry envelope. We've collected our seeds in the autumn, now we're going to plant them in some soil. With seeds like the um, larch seeds, I'd suggest storing them in your fridge because they're far more perishable. But these guys, your nuts, such as conkers and uh, oaks, they've got a protective film on them. It should see them through the winter with minimal um, kind of rotting or parasites getting in there. So let me just show you how I'm going to plant these guys because I have um, 12 conkers and 28 oaks. In fact, I'm just going to dump them in like that. Yes, I was using my cap to uh, <laughs> transit them. So I'm just going to uh, have the conkers taking up around half the pot and the oaks taking up the other half. Right, so we've sorted out the conkers as you can see, uh, they're taking up about half the pot. Um, now you can leave them on the surface but it's better just to give them a bit of insulation in the winter and protect them a little bit from the elements. So I'm just going to push each one a couple of inches down into the soil, like so. And then once I've done that, with all of these guys, as well as the oaks, I'm going to uh, cover them all over, obviously, with some soil, so that they're no longer exposed. But I would just recommend pressing them down like so. With acorns from oak trees, doesn't matter what species, you'll have the end, which was connected to the plants, and the end with a little um, kind of nipple on. And um, all you need to do is go nipple side down and press it down into the soil. Obviously these are going to be covered over as well. So I'm going to finish off with the oaks and show you what we do next. Right then, as you can see, we've completed putting all the seeds in the pots. We've pushed them all down into the soil and we're ready to cover them over. Um, now you may think they're far too close together, there's far too many in this pot. Bear in mind, these are going to be one year seedlings with just a few leaves by the end of September next year. This is a huge... I think 20 litre pots, okay, maybe 25, there's more than enough soil in here for all of these trees as one year seedlings. Um, I've grown communally before in a communal pot like so with multiple species including oak and horse chestnuts and they've all done extremely well. Um, just as in a, a, a woodland or a forest, the trees are competing with each other for light and resources. So they sink really deep healthy roots, they shoot for the stars because especially oak trees, if it was just planted in a pot on its own, they'd be very small at the end of the year. This will encourage big healthy plants and then the next winter you separate them and pot them on into their own individual plants. We're just going to uh, kind of cover them all over. Okay. And just like so, spread that out evenly so that some of the seeds aren't too deep and some of them aren't too shallow. 
and then I'm just going to lightly press the soil just to firm them all in. Right then, so that's the final step completed. Um, other than in about October time, maybe November, once all the leaves have fallen, I'm just going to dash a load of leaves on the surface in here and that will, like I say, uh, be beneficial to the, uh, the seeds. Um, insulate them from frost, add woodland soil chemistry to the top layer and um, just give them the uh, overall habitat they would be growing in naturally. Um, I know the sticks don't look great, um, but you'd understand if the birds in your garden or where you, wherever you grow were as unrelentless as they are in this garden. It's actually ridiculous. Any inch of black soil, fresh soil, dug soil, any new plant pots, new plants, new seeds planted, the birds are straight in it, just digging it up. And it's not just one species, the sparrows, the blackbirds, the pigeons, they're all, it's like they're conspiring together to ruin my plants. And so I've had to ruin the look of a garden myself and have sticks in every single pot or dug area. Um, it's so annoying, but it's just needed in this garden. So obviously do what you need to do in your circumstance um, to protect your seeds. Uh, but this is basically how I would grow and how I am growing oaks and horse chestnut seeds and um, now all that's left to do other than the leaves in the uh, thick of autumn is to get them over into the plant the tree nursery just over there and then all we can do is wait until spring <laughs>